Have you seen any of Gary Nolan stuff on the metallurgy, on the, the different samples that they've collected from these supposed down crafts that defy all our understanding of how to create alloys and so how expensive it would be to craft these things? Let me ask you a question. You've got alloys that are beyond known human technology, mm -hmm. and you've got discussion of alloys that are beyond human technology. Mm -hmm. Which is it? Well, it's certainly discussions. That's the problem. Right. I mean, I don't know uh, who... See if you can find anything on Gary Nolan's samples. So Diana Pasolko, who'd been on the podcast before, she she had done some excavating of these areas where they pr purport that these things had crashed and they could still find pieces, which uh, made me a little skeptical. As soon as I see you still find... You didn't pick them all up? Like, yeah. Why wouldn't they send someone out there right. to pick everything up? You why would, would you... You would sift. Yeah. You, you would take truckloads and you 100%. would sift. You would get every single scrap of that stuff. Yep. But if I wanted someone to believe that a craft was there, I'd leave a bunch of bullshit out in the field. I'd blindfold them like they did. I'd take them out to this spot. This is the spot. Look right. around. Oh, look, you found a piece. <laughs> like, how do you not know where all the fucking pieces are? If this thing crashed 30 years ago, why didn't you go over this place with a fine tooth comb? People do that for arrowheads. Yeah. Why would you not do that for alien craft m metal? Of course you would. Yeah. Also, there's the other problem. It's like, why are these things crashing? Right. Exactly. They're so fucking good. They can get here from another dimension. They're, 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 they're partying. They got here and they just. <laughs> They don't know they're... They get a hold of some Jack Daniels. The next thing they... you know, they're, they're crashed in the sand. <laughs> they're having a good time in America. It's also, that's a big problem, too. A lot of these sightings are in America. They're like the, if yeah. you have to look at the chart, there's sightings overseas, for sure. They, they happen all over the world, look, we, undoubtedly. But they happen a lot more here. We have an alien problem across many different <laughs> dimensions. <laughs> yeah, we do. We, go, we have multiple alien problems. Yeah, we have multiple... <laughs> That's another thing that they're gaslighting people on, the idea that they would let people come over here so they would vote. Of course they would. That's a great way to like get voters. So these are these pieces that Gary Nolan claims to have had. And what does it say about these pieces? I mean, this is, well, I could only find it in the video. I was trying to find pictures US of it somewhere U.S. explosion. Else. Okay, so this is Some from, uh, how do you say that, Ubatuba? Ubatuba, Brazil? So this is a different, it might be a different pronunciation in Portuguese. But this is a, a different crash than the Virginia one. So there's been multiple sightings and things happen in Brazil, apparently. Brazil also has a little bit of an alien problem. Oh, yeah. A little, little one. But the Virginia one is wild. That's the most wild one. Yeah, but those, those um, fragments there mm -hmm. appeared from where I'm sitting to look like they were made of pixels. Let me see that again. That could just be a low-resolution photograph. No, no. It, I'm kidding with you. I'm just saying we're looking at that thing. As if we know that it's a fragment of metal and we're being told that it has properties that are unfamiliar. But what we have, the evidence you and I have, is pixels. Right. Sure. We're not there. We don't get to see these things. Also, even if you gave it to me, what, right. what, what, how's that going to help me? I have no yeah, idea what you're – yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't even – even if you gave me the microscopes to look at it, I'm like, what am I seeing? Right. I'm seeing layers? Is that what this is? Like, right. How do they do this? Right. So that's why, look, you know, I want – a team of honest biologists to look at some space biology. That mm. would settle this immediately. Yeah, immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Like if there really is a body. Just like one. When everyone says there's frozen body somewhere. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. We can settle this tomorrow. Let some people in. Okay, here it is. Alleged extraterrestrial metal from the bottom of a wedge-shaped craft in the late 1940s made of 26... Alternating layers, 1 to 4 microns dark bismuth and 100 to 200 microns silver, magnesium, zinc alloy. Each of six pieces received from U.S. Army source were formed with a curvature that tapered. Wow. That is incredibly compelling metallurgical narrative. If it's true. Transmitted by pixels. Right. That's the problem. Yeah, and, that's the and problem. It's also the late 1940s. How many of these fucking things crashed? Uh, it was happening all the time. That's a weird thing, right? Like, uh, think of how many Corvettes there are. Yeah. You don't find a whole lot of them, like, on the side of the road crashed. Yeah, it's not a common thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's finding Corvettes in the, in the, in the, the desert. 
Look, yep. we found a Corvette. There's so many Corvettes. There's millions of them. <laughs> right. And yet, <laughs> and yet most of them make it from A to B. But these UFOs, oh, man. They're, they're so smart. They can come here from other planets and they just, yeah, yeah. boom. Well, what maybe a- we're not on their map. And so they're like. Or maybe the only people that are the only uh, intelligent life outside of this planet that's willing to do it. They're like Australian outback people. They're like those those wild dudes who uh, go overlanding. In the, you, mm. ever seen, you know, Australia has a, sure. a big overlanding culture yes. where they build up these vehicles and they, they take them off into the bush and they, they, they live off of them. My friend Adam Greentree does that. These people are wild. Uh, Australians are wild folk. So maybe they're like the Australians of space and they just <laughs> overlanding it and it doesn't always they're work out <laughs> overlanding they're these nuts that like the you know there's people that go out in the desert for 30 days and they have enough food and water and they have a solar thing on the top of their their rig and that's it charges their cell phone and they have you know jerry cans of petrol so they can keep going and well i, I kind of dig this look that's yeah, fine if 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 it were possible to right traverse vast empty spaces and go to places that were known to have life i'd be all about that but so, it would yeah. only be the real hardcore adventurers that would take that chance. And maybe those people are nuts. Maybe those alien people are nuts just like the human people are nuts that do that kind of stuff. Right. They like to get into trouble, yeah. winch themselves out. and Wild then, people. Yeah. They got winches on their spaceships. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>